Praise the Lord Jesus. I am so happy to be able to bring you the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Today I want to talk about strength and power and the ability that you have through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a scripture here, praise the Lord. I titled it The Armor of God. Amen. Ephesians 6, 14 to 17. It says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Isn't that beautiful? God gives us the instruction on how to win a battle, praise the Lord. Amen. Because you're going to have a lot of opposition. And this opposition is going to come to you just about every day, every week. Sometimes, some days will be so nice and comfortable, then all of a sudden, all oh, hell will break loose on you, you know? And then you say, wow, what happened? You're going through a trial. You're going through hardship. You're going through a hard time. But you know what? You're not in control at all. The Spirit of God that lives in you is in control. Amen. And Jesus placed himself in there for a reason, praise God. You see, the, the spiritual equipment of the Christian is here described in detail. The belt, the breastplate, the sandals, the shield, the helmet, and the sword. Truth is the belt, amen, as righteousness is the breastplate. Having your loins girt about truth, praise the Lord. As a belt or girdle kept the armor in its proper place, giving strength and of action, so truth acts in relation to righteousness, faith, and peace. If truth were wanting, there could be none of these things and nothing Christ-like or noble, amen? The truth here does not mean truth nor doctrine, as the Word of God is again referred to, nor even sincerity in the sense of truthfulness, but the truth subjectively apprehended, that is, the knowledge and belief of the truth, hallelujah. It is the conscience grasp of the truth that gives a Christian a boundless confidence uh, in his conflict uh, with evil, praise the Lord. Truth and righteousness work together, praise the Lord. When this is combined, let me tell you something. Nothing can come against it, amen? Sometimes there's error. As a principle of life, dissolves strength uh, and unnerves uh, for the great fight of sin, amen? Because when there's error in your life and you don't repent it, let me tell you something, you're going to lose the great fight of sin, amen? But truth is what? Our proper girdle? Because we fight for a God of truth. In Titus 1, 2, he said, In hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before time began, and against Satan, the father of lies. Uh, in John 8, 44, You are of your father, the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Without it, we are spiritless, heartless, and weak. Amen. The breastplate. Having done the breastplate of righteousness, praise the Lord. The Roman soldier wore it to protect his heart the central of the physical life. The breastplate of the Christian is here called the righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head, praise God. It can hardly mean moral rectitude, uh, which offer all would be, but a poor guard uh, against, praise the Lord, the, the reproaches of conscience uh, or the assault of Satan. The righteousness of God is by faith, amen? In Philippians 3, Verses 8 and 9, it says, Yes, indeed, I count all things lost for the excellence uh, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish, that I may gain Christ uh, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Glory to God. It is the righteousness so perfect it is satisfies every demand of law and is strictly proof against assaults uh, from within or from without, praise the Lord. Nothing can come against you when you're walking in that upright standing of God. Amen? I mean, you, you have it all, praise God, praise the Lord. 
Let us not show the bare breast uh, of our righteousness to the temper, but the righteousness of God himself imputed to us and received by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight, praise the Lord. Our righteousness is combined, praise the Lord, with the faith that we have in Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The breastplate was purchased by Christ as a dear rate, praise the Lord. None of his soldiers uh, who have not put it on, without it, God himself will fight against you. If you have it, uh, you are sure to, of uh, ultimate triumph. In Romans 8, 31, 32, it says, What then shall we do these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him for all of us. How shall you not with him also freely give us all things? Sandals, having your feet shod with the preparation of the, of the gospel of peace. The legs of the Roman soldiers were covered uh, with graves and, and bellows. Uh, these were the sandals or caligas, we can say. They were wrapped around the legs, praise the Lord, to the point, praise God, uh, that they wouldn't be hit below by the swords or, or arrows or whatever. Swiftness of foot was a great consequence in military movement. Christians uh, are to show a readiness, a clarity, and El creative of movement in doing God's will. We can't stand still. we got to be moving all the time. I like what Brother Jesse said. Man, action, amen, is moving forward, not backwards. The preparedness is the effect of the gospel of peace, which inspires us with a severity and courage and liberates us from those doubts uh, which generate weakness, amen. We cannot have doubt when we're serving God. We are the righteous of God, amen. We walk in the faith that God has given us, praise the Lord. The unready warrior is liable to sudden and secret attacks, amen. The Christian ought to ever to be prepared uh, to the advance against the enemy, to obey his great captain, to fight, to suffer, or to die in cause of God and truth. The shield, above all, he says, taking the shield of faith, a shield cover the whole body as well as the armor itself. Faith is a shield uh, in the spiritual welfare, praise the Lord. Amen. This warfare is tremendous. Amen. But if you have faith in God, praise the Lord, your faith, praise the Lord, is going to see you through. And when the devil tries to fire those old memories of the past, amen, he cannot pass uh, the shield of faith because it is truth and you're covered, amen, and washed by the blood of Jesus. It is that truth which Christ is the object at once, the substance of things hope for, and the evidence of things not seen. The confidence which depends uh, on the understanding from error, the heart from weakness or despair, the will from the revolt against divine command. It is the word, the victory, that, cometh, cometh, that overcometh the world, praise the Lord. It is special service. It's quenched all the fiery darts of the wicked ones. Satan showers his burning arrows upon the soul of the Christian, either in the shape of blasphemous suggestions or unholy thoughts or tongues to stare, but faith makes the soul unpenetrable, praise Lord. To such destructive missiles, because it falls back upon the divine word and apprehends the mercy of God, the merits of Christ, uh, and to the help of the Spirit. Isn't that tremendous? The helmet. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects the head, the most export, exposed part of the body, enables the soldier to hold it up without fear of injury and to look calmly around uh, the enemy's movements, praise the Lord. Amen. Salvation and the mere hope of it is in First Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet of the hope of salvation. It is a helmet that covers the head, our true defense against the devil. It will make you active in all duties, uh, courageous in all conflicts, cheerful in all conditions, and constant in the end of life. Uh, the sword, uh, the sword uh, of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, the other parts of the armor were defensive. This is both offensive and defensive. The word of God is a sword because it pierces like a word into the heart. Amen. And Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even to the division of the soul, of the spirit, and of the joint and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts uh, and the intent of the heart, because it pierces through all the disguises of error, because it lays the wiles uh, of the devil. It was wielded by Christ himself in his great temptation. It is still the saint's only weapon of offense, whether the temptation is to atheism, to impurity, to despair, to unbelief or covenantness, to pride, to hatred or wilderness, the legend it is written stands clearly revealed on the whole of the sword. It, the sword of the spirit, because he is the author, its interpreter, and he who makes it effectual to the defeat of all enemies. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? You have the power of God. The enemy is going to come against you, but the armor of God by faith and righteousness and truth, praise the Lord, and you are shod with the gospel to go out there and preach the word of God, praise the Lord, because you carry the truth in your heart, and as long as you walk in the truth, it's because you're walking in righteousness. you got to praise the Lord for the strength that he's given you and the power of his might, praise the Lord, that puts you ahead of the game. Why? It's not about you, but it's God in you, praise the Lord, that has the victory. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen.